Hello and uh, welcome to Copper State Treasures. Uh, my name is Tim. Uh, today we're going to do another comparison video. Uh, pulled out the old 1926 Model T and we're going to compare it to a 1928 Model A. <laughs> from one of our previous videos, uh, we compared the 28 Model A to a 1928 Chevrolet. Uh, I thought it'd be really interesting to show how Ford uh, updated the Model T to the Model A uh, styling and uh, some of the different upgrades that they put into the car. Um, this car's been garaged for 15 years, uh, about 23 years ago, I pulled the engine out, did an engine swap. Uh, so the original 1926 engines in a, a storage shed out back. It's in pieces and in one of the next videos, we'll pull that engine out because we're gonna rebuild that this year. Uh, this car is gonna get painted and uh, new interior. And, uh, a new top on it too. So I've got some new top wood to show you here. Um, I probably put close to 2,000 miles on this car before I took the engine down. I had already gone through and rebuilt the rear end. And um, this car, I've probably put about 400 miles on it since I've purchased it. And just my personal preference uh, from driving the 26T to the 28A, um, I almost prefer driving the 26T. It's a little more forgiving uh, with road bumps. Uh, I like shifting a Model T better than shifting a Model A. It's just kind of what I grew up with. I've uh, been driving Model T's since the early 90s. Uh, for me it's just second nature to be fiddling around with rods on the column and, and not having to do really anything with my feet once you're up to driving. So. Uh, let's uh, take a closer look at these cars and uh, see if we can point out some similarities and some differences. Let's see, I'm actually just going to grab the camera and take you on a little tour. So, um, first thing you'll notice is the, um, the cowl section. How, uh, oh gosh, 1926. Um, they came out with the all steel body and they moved the gas tank up to the uh, cowl. So you lift your little air vent and then there's your your gas tank. Ford had had these uh, cowl vents for a number of years for their closed cars but the styling uh, from the 26, 27 to the 28 has this this bead that goes down the side of the cowl and on the A, uh, for 28 and 29, you notice they did the same kind of idea. Uh, also, the uh, windshield is the same type of fold out, fold out with these little brackets uh, that lock the position so you have air ventilation. Um, the 2627T, it's the same thing. It's a, they almost look identical. Um, and of course, later in um, 3031, they went to uh, more of that streamlined look on the A, and uh, it, with the exception of the four-door sedan, where it had always had that that streamlined look. Um, the 26 Roadster and Touring had that streamlined uh, body as as well. Uh, instead of having this kind of interruption in the, the flow. Um, you'll notice, just looking at the two cars, the T's taller. And if I get up here, so I can give you a little bird's eye view, up over the top, you can see the new wood going on there. 
and um, the A had gone to um, what really all the uh, car manufacturers were doing. They were going to this uh, round, rounded back, whereas the T still had the, you know, they talk about the telephone booth coupes and so forth. It was kind of like a straight line up and then a squared off flat top. Um, I guess uh, the difference would be like a, somebody wearing a top hat versus a, a derby hat. Uh, some other similarities. Um, 26, 27 T uh, had the option of doing uh, the wire wheels. Uh, this car originally had wood wheels. I found uh, a really nice deal on um, this set of wire wheels. I think I paid a thousand bucks for all five wheels with hubs and everything. So I converted over to the wire wheel and I never regretted it. Having those wire wheels um, <laughs> takes out any wobble that your uh, wood wheels would have. Oh, I was going to show you these. Uh, spare tire carriers. Uh, it's a similar spare tire carrier setup, though the, the T is a little bit longer. The A has a shorter bracket that it goes up to. And I'm, I'm just uh, comparing two-door sedan to two-door sedan. Um, you get a good look at the, the back here. Uh, and that's really, that design is just one year difference um, considering they stopped production of this body design in 1927 and what October ish 1927 they came out with this body design here um, you had the standard bumpers whereas the T it was only optional uh, I wish I had a set of bump bumpers for that car so I think it uh, dresses them up even though um, you normally don't think of a Model T as having bumpers. Um, looking at uh, the chassis, let's see if we can get under here. I'm not sure how good the lighting is here. Yeah, you can kind of see going up under, you see the, um, the front axle has a little bit of a curve to it. They've dressed up that front end a lot more uh, so you just don't see all this spindly action here. You know, that front leaf spring, uh, straighter axle, and you notice um, uh, no front brakes, <laughs> no, no wheel service wheel brakes on this car. Uh, it's all that transmission brake, whereas the A they had to modify the uh, wheels so you could have this nice little um, uh, brake drum there. Um, another difference is the A came standard with shock absorbers. Uh, the T, the main shock absorber is you, <laughs> the driver. Um, this, I need to pull this off and rebuild that I probably just rebuild the whole front end. I've gone through the spindles on this, uh, but I've never done the spring on this. Uh, the rear end, this has got a lot of, a lot of road dirt on it here, but you can, if we get up under here, you can see the leaf spring and the rear axle. I had rebuilt that leaf spring and actually had to wear it, weld this spare, spare tire carrier. Uh, there's such a heavy load on here, this weld usually breaks. That uh, thing's just suspended off of there. The 2627 had this larger brake drum, uh, which is it's just a parking brake. Um, and then you look at the um, rear end on the A, uh, You've got the, uh, the service brakes, you know, the pedal brakes. Um, later this year, uh, they did a, a separate parking brake. Uh, so the drums are a little bit wider. This is a 28AR, so it's early Model A. 
Then we look up under here and you got your, your banjo rear end. Uh, but otherwise, let's see if I can tilt up a little bit here. You can see the um, same type of leaf spring suspension as the T. Basically the same, same thing going on. The doors, this locked here. So that's your, that's your key lock, which is the same as the Model A, but the Model A had the key lock right here in the handle. You can see over there, your key lock in the handle, which I suppose is a little fancier. For the driver's door, uh, that's your lock. So you can't open. So it's the same type of thing. You, uh, Supposed to get out on the passenger side, lock this and lock the door over there. And then um, you're, to open the doors, you push these forward. And you look on the inside of the door. I have all the panels off this, uh, cause I stripped it down. I started sanding on it a number of years ago. These door latches are kind of similar. It's kind of the, Kind of the same idea going on there. Um, you've got a little post here um, to keep, you know, it's kind of a safety thing. If you roll over or whatever, it'll kind of help keep the door in place. The Model A, they did the reverse. They put the hole in the door and they put the, um, that pin right there in the, uh, the stanchion, this body, part of the body frame there. Um, you got kind of the same thing going on with the, the seats, uh, they fold forward. Uh, this car has a really nice set of, uh, original floorboards. And you can see over on the passenger side, there's even an original, um, uh, like pocket for the door. The A had them, had those pockets on the doors going into the back here you can see the floorboard set up um, one difference between the a and the t just pop this up here there's your battery compartment for the t it's behind the driver's seat on the a i'm not going to pop mine open because i have the mat in there the a batteries right there and of course you have your shifter in the middle this is the the three pedal system and of course your your commutator or spark and then your accelerator right there um, the use and functionality of the interior on this two-door sedan is it's so much like the A, it's not funny. Uh, you've got the simpler dash here, just your lighting switch, ignition, and your um, ammeter. Uh, this had a dash light there and your choke rod there, where if um, you had a T, you're going to an A, a lot of it would be similar. Uh, this one had an AC speedometer over here which uh, that'll go back in when the car goes back together. And then the speedometer pickup, uh, generally for T's, is on the wheel. You have this little, I guess you'd call it a ring gear. It's little notches there. Then you have a, a bracket with a gear that just meshes with that. It spins and there's a cable that goes directly up to the speedometer. Um, I've seen some people use uh, bicycle speedometers. Um, taking a closer look at the roof, you can see how uh, very little wood in these bodies. Um, there's wood on these shelves back here. 
uh, over there and you can, there's a piece that's loose that's supposed to be standing up. It's just tack strips and everything else is kind of held in place by screws. Um, the top has the majority of the wood except for body blocks uh, to hold the body to the frame. Let's look, looking over the top here, it's kind of cool looking. This is a top wood kit. I purchased this a number of years ago. Um, uh, it's from uh, wood from for wood for Fords. Uh, I think it was Chuck and Judy uh, Kubel. Kubel. Um, they did the kit, and I've so far I've just uh, kind of fit it and uh, did some light sanding and then some varnish on it, uh, and then that just bolts. You can see the bolt holes here. Yeah, everything just bolts right into. Um, into the top frame, these bolt into the these rails, and then uh, there's bolt holes in the top frame of the of the car. Uh, the visor, uh, you can see it's kind of a similar visor look. If you do a side by side look of the two cars, um, this is. I don't know what somebody did here. It looks like it might be roofing tar. It should be just that the normal um, grain vinyl look on there. Um, the headlights, uh, Model A went to the, the neat, shiny, nifty looking headlights. But you notice for 28, it's the same fluted design as the uh, T's. So the Model T's used that fluted design for, for quite a while. Um, and it looks, the front end looks a lot more substantial on the A. I mean, it just, it looks, it looks bigger. Um, the motor's not a whole lot bigger other than 20 horsepower, 40 horsepower. Um, actually, I think the, whole power plant on the T is probably larger than the A because that little transmission box is not that big on the A. Um, actually, let's take a look at the, the motor here on the T. Nothing horribly fancy here. Um, this is a 1917 motor, so there's no no generator, uh, there's no starter. <laughs> this, um, this is a really good motor uh, I had sitting around. I wanted to keep driving the car. Um, so um, I slapped it in and you have to hand crank it because it runs on magneto only. Even though you can hook a battery up to the switch and run this off of, um, uh, run it off of battery uh, or magneto. Uh, but you do have to hand crank start this engine. Um, this does have the 2627 uh, fan. That's that 2627 fan there as opposed to this bracket here is the earlier fan. Um, whoever did this engine just left that on there. I didn't do anything to change it. Um, let me take a look at the other side here. Of course, 2627, Ford moved the um, coil box to the uh, engine. And then you've got your, um, uh, your terminal block here. I always have a a fuse in mine in case there's a short. Uh, it's not fun to have these things melt. <laughs> and of course you see there's no no starter there. Uh, one major mechanical difference, oh yeah of course the uh, generators on the other side on the T if there's a generator. Starter would be on the same side for the 2627 uh, as the A and then you'd have your 
your steering gearbox here. Uh, for the Model T, this teeny little thing right here is the steering gearbox. There's a, a main gear, then a set of triple gears, and if, uh, if this thing pops off and it's loose, it's like Laurel and Hardy, you have no steering. <laughs> Um, so you have to make sure this is grease packed and, and working well. The other thing that happened with the T's is these rivets here uh, would go bad. This would split and break out. And as you're steering, the, the steel tube in the column here would just twist from side to side. So you have a lot of slop in your steering. This one's actually pretty good. Horn there instead of in the middle. Go ahead and close this here. Looking at the A. A lot more substantial <laughs> uh, hood latches on the A. This is more of a serious automobile hood. It's heavier. Uh, you can't just pop it off the T-hood. You can just pick it up and set it aside. You could drive without it. But uh, this is an early 28 gearbox. And of course you have your early 28 um, generator there and your distributor on top of the engine. Uh, but that's kind of what it looks like and of course the steering columns a little more different um, you have your lighting switch and your horn in the middle of the column so it's more what you would expect for a newer car um, there's only one coil on an A as opposed to four coils on a T and then you have a distributor um, what does the distribution for the T for selecting which cylinder is firing is, gosh, this is kind of hard to see here. It's, I pull that off there. There's a little timer here. It's called a commutator and it's just a roller on the camshaft. It rolls around and it grounds out uh, each of these wires, which uh, grounds out each of the um, four coils, and then that camshaft determines which coil is firing, and then that's connected to each cylinder. Uh, oh, another major difference, T to A, Model T's negative ground, uh, Model A's positive ground which was done to um, you know, just help prevent corrosion on, um, on the battery terminals. Now I can tell you, um, I've never really had problem with corrosion on a T battery terminal as opposed to the A. I mean, A battery terminals really clean. Um, carburetors on the same side. Uh, a has a much better carburetor. Much better. This one has a has a Zenith carb on it. And this is a little bit bigger manifold, uh, but it's you know sediment bowl, gravity feed into a single barrel updraft carburetor. Um, God, I should just leave these hoods open as many times as I'm opening them here. Uh, very similar here. Sediment bowl, gravity feed into a single barrel updraft. Oh, forgive me, side draft. <laughs> side draft carburetor compared to the updraft on the A. And uh, much smaller uh, intake and exhaust manifold. So you get a lot more airflow going through that A engine, which is part of uh, why it does much better uh, horsepower. Um, 
other than that, uh, oh, the A has an oil pump and a water pump. Um, the T has no water pump or oil pump. <laughs> uh, so that's basically it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you can, um, you can leave it in the comment section of the video. We're going to be doing another video where um, I've got a storage shed in the back that's full of parts. Uh, I packed everything in there about 16 years ago. I don't even know what's in there other than the motor for this thing's in there. So we're going to do a, a, an unpacking video where we just pull everything out, kind of see what's in there and find find the motor for the 26T here. Uh, anyhow, uh, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for um, the next video, the, that unpacking video, and maybe we can come up with another comparison video. So uh, thank you for joining us here at Copper State Treasures.